for this little painting, I'm just using an ampersand aqua board. It's only four by four inches, so it's quite small. And ampersand actually recommends that you open up the surface by wetting it first before you start your painting. So I'm doing that now. I'm just taking clean water and painting it all over the surface of the aqua board. My brush here today that I'm using is a special brush. This is a handmade bamboo handle brush by Lebenzin. Um, Tracy Lebenzin makes these brushes himself and they are the finest quality you'll find anywhere and just as unique as your own art. So if you're looking for something that's as unique as you are as a painter, these brushes are just so cool and they will last a lifetime. This one is Siberian Elk Hair, which is, I think, really neat. The first color I'm going to dip into is my Winsor Newton Transparent Orange. I'm mixing it in with some water and starting with a very, very light wash. And this is what I'm basically drawing the shape with. I'm not using any pencil in this artwork. I'm starting out right away with paint. And that's because it's a very simple shape. And if you paint lightly enough in the first layer, any mistakes you make can certainly be smoothed out or washed over. So it's not a big deal if you mess up a little bit. I'm starting out with this really light orange, creating a moon shape here. And this is representing the outer peel of the kiwi. The circle in the middle, of course, is gonna be the green part. So I'm leaving that blank for now. And the surface I'm painting on is still wet. So everything is softening a little bit and blending nicely. So you don't have to wait for it to dry once you apply that first wash of water. You can go ahead and use wet and wet techniques or whatever you want from the very beginning. So I've already suggested the shadow beneath the kiwi as well. And there's our basic drawing just using paint. The next thing I'm gonna do is paint the center of the kiwi. And it's a very bright yellow. And so I'm starting with my Holbein Lemon Yellow and just carefully drawing this shape. It's kind of a strange shape. It's almost like a lopsided star. And of course, again, if it's not quite just like the photo, don't worry, every kiwi is different. So I'm painting that in with a very vibrant lemon yellow. And you'll notice I'm using the tip of my brush to create this texture around the edge, almost like a starburst effect. And that's suggesting the texture that we see inside of the kiwi. This yellow will, of course, blend out into a darker color and that in turn will blend out into the green. So we're trying to start with these shapes that will connect easily into the next layer, so to speak. I'm filling the center in with even more watered down lemon yellow. I want this to be a really light value, but still have that burst, that pop of color. You can intensify this color as much as you want by adding more pure pigments around the edge. It's totally up to you how much you work on this section. The entire time I was working on this painting, I was amazed by how comfortable the handle of this brush was to hold. Most paintbrush handles are pretty skinny and your hand can cramp up after a while, especially when you're working this tiny. But that never happened with my bamboo handle brush. This color I'm using now is Holbein Permanent Green Number no. 1. It's a brilliant spring green, and you can actually create this green just by combining sap green or hooker's green with yellow, and so you don't have to have this color to achieve something very similar. I'm dipping into my leaf green as well. That's another Holbein color, just because I have it on my palette and it's providing a nice variety. So I'm painting the entire circular area inside of the kiwi, right up to that yellow sunbeam that we painted already. And I'm just being a little more careful as I approach the edge. You can use a drawing motion or a swiping motion of the brush to create that edge. And then just quickly blend it out so that it doesn't look like an illustration or that there's, so that it doesn't form any hard edges there. And I'm just pulling that paint in towards the center, still maintaining the motion of this sunbeam look where you have these striations coming out from the center, almost like an eye. And so the colors I've used here are permanent green number one, leaf green, and I've included a little bit of lemon yellow in there too. You can go more yellow, you can go more green. It's totally up to you. And here I'm just pulling that paint out and adding more texture. Now this is Hooker's Green and Terra Verde, these two dark greens on my palette. 
And so I've kind of mixed the two on my brush and now I'm painting darker streaks within that green center of the kiwi. All of this is wet and wet. We're applying wet paint to the wet paint and so it's softening and blending out really easily. The aquaboard surface does respond slightly different to the paint than a cotton watercolor paper will, but I really love this surface, especially for these fun, fast little paintings. And I love the way the paint spreads and explodes on this surface. So I'm continuing to just add these streaks, these vertical parallel lines, all the way around the shape of the kiwi. The values get a little bit darker in that green as you come towards the center of the kiwi. I'm taking my transparent orange and starting to apply that in the center where the green meets the yellow. When you combine the transparent orange with the green, it looks a little bit more brownish. And we're continuing to use color and texture and layers to deepen up the values and to darken it up as we come towards the center of the kiwi. And it's really make that, making that lemon yellow look even brighter, almost like sunshine poking through the center. Now you can't see it, but here I'm digging into my Daniel Smith Burnt Umber. This is just a dark brown. You can use any dark brown that you have, or you can mix it using something like Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. And I'm using this dark brown to add even darker streaks, kind of going over where I went with the green. It's really starting to look like a kiwi now as we add these darker values. And you'll be amazed once we add the seeds, it's all gonna to come together. And you can see the elk hair on this brush is incredible. It can go really tiny and really fine. The tip is so, so tiny. It's almost imperceptible how tiny that is. So you can use this for broad washes with the belly of the brush and you can go as fine as an eyelash with it. And now I'm just watering down that paint a little bit more and pulling the color out from that center, continuing to extend those sunbeams all the way out, almost to the edge, but not quite. Dabbing my brush in water if I need the paint to flow a little more and creating even more light washes of brown coming all the way to the edge. And you can soften the edges, almost like spokes on a wheel. Pull that brown down to the outside rim of your kiwi, but keep it really light in value. You don't want any of these little details to overpower the center, which is much darker in value. So I'm really just taking that brown paint that I already applied and taking the wet tip of my brush and pulling the paint out towards the edges of the kiwi. The paint is still really workable because it's quite damp still. I'm applying a little edge of very light watered down transparent orange and whatever's on my palette that's what I'm using. I'm not applying too much water. Remember lots of water will equal lack of control so always be controlling how much water is on your brush by dabbing on a paper towel or extracting some of the water along the edge of your jar. There are all kinds of ways to control that. I've dipped into my transparent orange again. You can see how vibrant that is in its pure form. And I'm using the tip of my brush to add teeny little dots of texture, the fuzz on the kiwi, just around the top edge. And those are just tiny suggestions. We're not gonna paint the whole edge. And then I'm dipping into my burnt umber again and intensifying the brown around the edge of the kiwi. Taking some more transparent orange and here's where we're gonna carefully draw the outline the shape of the skin on the kiwi. In my photo, the outside skin of the kiwi is quite orange looking. I think it lends a wonderful pop of color to the image. In real life, a kiwi I think is a little more brown than this, but I really liked, I was attracted to the color of this image. So I'm dropping in some burnt sienna in addition to that transparent orange, making it just slightly more brownish and Reinforcing my drawing from that initial first wash. And you'll notice my edges are not perfect. They're a little bit bumpy here and there. And that's because we want to try to imitate the soft fuzzy texture of the kiwi. It's not gonna be a perfectly smooth surface like an apple. And using the tip of my little brush, I am now adding some texture all along the edge. It's a very, very light feathering motion. 
and I'm sometimes allowing the tip of the brush to just catch on the surface, almost like the dry brush technique because it's drying really fast on the paper. The paint is actually staying put really well. It's not washing out. You can see I'm just adding all this texture. I'm not being super particular about it. I went a little bit broader with my brush strokes towards the bottom of the kiwi since that'll be more in the shadow. Now I'm rinsing that out and I'm gonna be mixing up a black here. And to do that, I like to combine my Daniel Smith Indigo with Burnt Umber. It's slightly watered down. It's not a totally pure black here. But with this color, I'm going to be painting the shadow on the underside of the kiwi. So I'm using that indigo here and just painting a thin little sliver of a shadow just underneath the kiwi, basically a straight line. And I'm allowing it to curve underneath the kiwi a little bit. And as the kiwi starts to curve upward and away, the shadow will disperse a little bit more and soften out and become lighter in value. So I'm gonna to try to imitate that here with more watered down tones on the left side of that shadow. You can see it's a little bit lighter here, helping it look a little more realistic. And where the kiwi is touching the table surface, it's much darker in value. And then I'm rinsing my brush and going even lighter and just softening that edge. I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. And with that dark color still on my brush, I'm starting to add a couple little textural details to the inside of the kiwi, which is now mostly dry. Reinforcing the dark edge. My paint is still quite watered down, so don't go too dark with this. And the center of the kiwi needs to be even darker, so I'm adding some more streaks in there with that dark gray color. Now I'm dipping into my burnt sienna and going darker with the values on the underside of the kiwi. You can see I'm just kind of moving my brush, rather helter-skelter, creating all of that texture on the surface. And if you allow the bristles of your brush to spread out slightly, it creates this fur texture with the very fine bristles. It's incredibly easy to do it this way. It almost looks like you finally painted every single little hair detail on that kiwi, but we know better. This went really fast. It's important to have good tools for when you're working on a painting. It can be very frustrating trying to do something and get a certain effect if your brush is just not working for you. So make sure you invest in good quality brushes and good quality materials. I would say the surface you paint on is the most important aspect, and then second would be the brush. The paint quality is also important, but probably still not as important as those two things. All right, I'm grabbing some more burnt sienna, going darker one more time on the underside of the kiwi. As it touches the table, that's where it's most in shadow, so we want it to be darkest in value there. And then I'm just adding a nice wet wash of transparent orange along the edge. Pretty happy with all that scumbled on texture. Now the most time consuming part of this painting is going to be the seeds for sure. We want to really slow down and take our time here and paint carefully. If you want to switch to a smaller brush, you can. I'm going to stick with my elk brush here. It's working so well for these tiny details. So I'm just dipping my brush in that indigo, getting some nice juicy paint. And now I'm gonna carefully paint on these tiny little seeds one by one. If you can, allow a couple little highlights to remain within the seeds, indicating the shine and the softness and the wetness of each little seed. You can also add a little glossy dot of white with white gouache once you're all finished with the painting. It's totally up to you how you wanna do your white. And also with the aqua board, you can actually remove paint by chipping it out. Yeah, you can actually chip it out with the reverse end of a brush. I've done this many times by scraping out whiskers or things like that. And so that's another way to get the white back. But of course, that's going to be a finishing touch. Don't do that unless you're really sure about it. So at the very, very fine tip of my brush, I'm carefully painting on each little seed. I'm observing my reference photo for placement and to get the approximate location of each seed. 
but it's not going to be perfect. I just want to make sure that I'm getting the expression of the kiwi and I'm not being overly methodical about it. If you're painting along with me and you're enjoying this project, or if you find this really helpful, please hit that like button and leave me a comment. It really helps me out as a creator so that I can continue to keep making content like this for you guys for free here on YouTube. So thanks for that. Let's keep going. So as you can see, make each seed unique and specific. Don't make them all exactly the same. You won't see that kind of uniformity in nature, so don't try to make it uniform. Unless you want it to look like an illustration, that's another thing. Some of the seeds are kind of squeezed between the pulp of the fruit, and so they look a little bit skinnier in appearance. So change up their sizes and how wide or how skinny they are. Because we're working so tiny, you might have to just keep dipping your brush in the water as it will start to dry out pretty quickly. Keep dipping your brush in the paint and loading it up. Make sure you have the darkest paint possible on your brush here, not at all watered down. And also make sure to do this step after the surfaces underneath are completely dry and all layers are dry. If you try to do these details too soon while your paint is still wet, they're just gonna run away from you. So this is definitely a wet on dry technique we want to employ for this portion of the painting. You can use a little circular motion with the tip of your brush. You can use a gentle drawing motion. If you want to do a couple practice runs on a scratch piece of paper first just to get the feel for the brush strokes necessary, of course you can do that. I've applied a little water here and that's helping soften that paint out and then I'm pulling and extending that indigo all the way towards the center. This is continuing to darken up those little streaks of shadows between the flesh and the pulp of the fruit. And it's lending a much more realistic look so that the seeds don't look like they're just pasted on. They look like they're actually part of the inside of the fruit. I'm gonna speed up the footage here so you guys don't have to watch me paint every single little seed. You can see the wonderful variety I'm trying to add skinny seeds and fat ones and all the little shadows in between. Once you're finished with the seeds all around, you can continue to add little blots of water and that's gonna help the paint just spread out a little bit more and look more natural and infused with the fruit. Make sure you're not putting too much on there or you might destroy the integrity of those seeds. So just very, very tiny little blots of water. Learning how to control the water and watercolor is definitely one of the hardest things and takes the most practice, but just keep at it and if you have to do it a couple times, don't worry. That's something every artist faces, is having to redo a project or messing up something and having to start over. That's totally normal, nothing to be afraid of. So just keep at it and keep working and I promise you'll, you'll see amazing results and you'll start to get better with every single painting you do. I'm taking a little more transparent orange and brown and gray and just darkening along these edges one more time. extending these so-called spokes almost in the center of the kiwi all the way to the edge. Working a little more quickly here to get kind of a loose transparent layer on. After I applied this layer, I kind of realized that I maybe went a little too dark with the center of the kiwi. And so I'm scraping some of that back out, taking my clean damp brush and removing it. And then I'm going to go over it again with another vibrant layer of leaf green and lemon yellow, just to try to restore some of that color again. And I like the look of that permanent green number one. It's so bright and brilliant. And so there, with that last layer of green on the kiwi is our finished kiwi. 
Make sure to let that dry and with aqua boards you can actually spray the surface with a I like to use a glossy spray and I'm actually adding one more layer of transparent orange to the skin of the kiwi before calling it done. But yeah, aqua boards can be framed behind glass or open like an oil painting. So enjoy and I hope you guys will try this project. If you do, just go ahead and tag me on Instagram because I'd love to see it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.